from Ubud. We are up at five o'clock to go to the Champahan Ridge Walk. I don't know how you say it. Champahan, Champahan, not entirely Something sure. Like that. Yeah. But I read about this on a blog. It explicitly said that the best time to do this was at sunrise because there won't be as many tourists around, hence why we're up so early. But I think we're both feeling rather fatigued, so this better be worth it. Yeah, we took a pretty long journey from the Gilly Islands to get here in the first place yesterday. We didn't film anything because there wasn't anything particularly new about what we were doing. Just a standard ferry ride, or well, so we thought. Exactly. The ferry ride was turbulent at best. I was worried that the boat was going to tip over or that the boat was going to flood or go under. Yep, the waves and the currents were absolutely crazy to the point where essentially the boat was at sort of 90 degrees and flew out of the water multiple times. So yeah, a little bit hair raising. But even just the rocking side to side, but the crew didn't seem to be worried. I'd say most of the passengers on the boat were definitely either worried and or sick. But the key thing is we're alive. Uh, and we are now up to hopefully go and enjoy some of the best that Ubud has to offer. So let's crack on. It is so eerie being the only people on the street this early in the morning. As you can see, there are a few scooters and cars, but we haven't seen one other person. So strange to have this vibrant city completely shut down into ourselves. Just like that, we've reached Carsa Cafe, which marks the end of the ridge walk. Now that we've completed the Champuhan Ridge Trail, still unclear on how to say it, even after completing it, what did you think? I thought that was awesome. I feel like without the coffee, then my brain couldn't quite process it in the right way, but certainly the progression and everything that you get to see here is just really cool. I mean, it's got a little bit of everything. You start off and there's a bit of a waterfall, and then you walk through, and then there's just kind of a rainforest trail, and then you come through and there's a temple, and then there's a little bit of a touristy bit, but that then overlooks rice terraces. And then you kind of get to the end point and you get rice terraces, traditional houses, and then a view of the mountains that make up Bali, which is amazing. Just being able to see all of those different bits of landscapes within the space of what, about three kilometers is crazy. Really, really cool. Yeah, I also enjoyed it for that reason, because you got to see different types of nature in a really short period of time and I thought it gave us a really good feel for all that a bud has to offer. But now I think we've definitely earned some coffee and some breakfast so shall we? Yes that was a challenging thing to do without any coffee or food so let's go find some.
It's barely gone 7.15 and the city is already alive. So we've had a quick little rest and now it is time to go out and grab some lunch. Smoothie bowl. Smoothie bowl. Smoothie bowl. We've just left Get Fruity Cafe, which is where we had lunch. It was a little bit hard to film in there because they were playing their music so loud. That being said, it was great music that you should have a good lip syncing session to. Yeah, I thought it was really good. Considering that we've had a number of smoothie bowls while we've been in Bali, that one was probably among the best value. And the really cool thing is they have like three kind of base bowls that you choose from. But then on top of that, you get to choose whether or not you get a dairy or dairy-free base included. But then on top of that, you also get to choose two additional toppings. So if you are after a specific kind of nut or seed, or there's even passion fruit seeds, so if you want like extra fruit in there as well, then you get to throw those in and they're just included. So that just seemed really neat. And it also just really helped uh, fundamentally. It was all just delicious. So why wouldn't you want to go there? Don't judge us too harshly for stopping somewhere else. We cannot get by on one cup of coffee when we had such an early start. And the coffees at Get Fruity were not appealing despite how amazing their smoothie bowls were. So here we are. just finished wandering around Abud Royal Palace and if you're wondering how Abud has a royal family it's a little bit convoluted. Once upon a time then there were multiple kingdoms, multiple sultanates, essentially multiple royal families that were laced all around Indonesia and that included Bali. Over time due to colonialism and also independence each of those royal families has had their powers stripped away as well as most of their property. However, technically these royal families exist, people still know of them, but they just are ceremonial positions as opposed to anything else. As a result, well, my understanding anyway is that this technically is still a royal residence of the royal family after Bud, but obviously in terms of their actual governmental power, it's next to zero. And I think we've just been allowed to wander around the outside courtyards. There seem to be a lot of pagodas, and in that sense, it actually reminds me of almost like a Buddhist temple because they use a lot of like red and gold coloring and they have these very intricate statues which are kind of anthropomorphic, is that the right word? Where they're kind of animal and human across maybe some like dragon and lion in there, but they're very beautiful and intricate. Yeah, it is interesting because definitely this seems just like a public receiving area in the sense that definitely it seems like there are audience halls and temples and obviously gates to allow people in, but there's nothing obvious by way of living quarters or anything like that so perhaps that is by design because there are actually people who are living here but we really can't say anything for certain because there's just not that much information available on the internet 
But the great thing is that it's free to come here and explore. So it's beautiful to just look around and take in all the sculptural art. It's gorgeous. otherwise known as the Water Temple. We have been kitted out in a sarong and a kimono, and we paid a total of 70,000 rupiah to come in here, which is probably six Canadian dollars, maybe 650. This palace is known number one for the lotus pond behind me, but it is also dedicated to the goddess Saraswati, who it's named after, and she is the goddess of a bunch of different things, including like knowledge and wisdom and love and arts. So excited to look around. Very nice. It seems like we're only allowed to see a very small section of this like with the palace but honestly of what we can see then it definitely gives you a sense of the grandeur, the detail and also just the beauty that was created here. So still very nice, not sure. It was we... worth the 70,000 rupiah? Exactly my thought, like the fact that we were charged an entrance fee for essentially glorified formal dress rental then uh, yeah, not sure about that so much, but yeah, uh, the opportunity to see this is still nice, even though we've only been here for about 10 minutes. Yeah, and this is a Balinese Hindu temple, which is quite different than the Hindu temples we've seen in India and Sri Lanka and Malaysia. Those ones were all very colorful, colors of the rainbow. This one is more stone colored and terracotta colored because of the brick and then again the gold and red details as well maybe some green jade too it is much more muted but the carvings are nevertheless very intricate it's interesting how there's obviously similarities between a lot of buddhist temples hindu temples balinese hindu temples but yet they're very different and it's nice to appreciate the beauty in each one of them Tonight, Nick and I are sharing tempeh satay that comes with rice, peanut sauce, and salad, and a vegetable tempeh curry that comes with rice. So excited to have this. Dinner was really, really affordable tonight. It was only 56,000 rupiah, which is five Canadian dollars. And the tempeh satay was fantastic that was the highlight of dinner and actually when you consider the fact that sixteen thousand went just on two big water bottles then actually phenomenal value we basically had two substantial meals for three dollars fifty canadian which is insane i think we have to go back there because we need more of that tempeh satay and also yes. to try a few of their other dishes oh yeah we are definitely are... making a return an equally good value. Yep. But I think that's pretty much it from us. We're just gonna chill out, 
watch some castle, I think. Yeah. And then um, head to bed. Yeah, I mean, it's already past 9.15, so you know. Exactly. And we have an early start tomorrow. So with that, then we'll catch you then. So until next time, take care. And keep smiling.